Do you remember when you were in school, there might have been the popular group of kids who were going to the gym early and they grew big beards and they were super confident talking to all of the girls there. They were the kids who had like naturally high testosterone and I was never one of these kids. I was always the unpopular kid. I was hanging around with the Goonies. I was like the in-betweeners, right? I wasn't speaking to any girls. Um, I just had low testosterone essentially. And I was quite young at the time, obviously, but like even getting into puberty when I had a girlfriend and stuff and throughout my whole life, like early um, adulthood, like late teenagers and like even my early twenties, like just two years ago, I feel like I had pretty low testosterone compared to a lot of guys. Wasn't very confident, couldn't really go up and like speak to people and stuff. Maybe over the past year or so, I have had a quite nice increase in testosterone, just some things in my life, like being more productive, being more like kind of driven, right? With this YouTube channel, self-improvement, right? Going to the gym, I put on like a good amount of size as well in terms of muscles. So I've definitely managed to improve my um, testosterone. And in this video, I'm gonna help you to do the same thing if you feel like you've got low test or you just want to build a bit more muscle at the gym and you want to feel better and stuff because i know guys who have got low test i know i know this one friend in particular who i'm pretty sure has got low test right and it's not good because he's just like super unhappy and he's not very driven he's not motivated he feels like shit he doesn't like look in great shape or anything like that so yeah, hopefully some of this advice will help you in this video and this is from like my personal experience self-experimentation looking up a lot of studies and things like that listening to a lot of podcasts also stick around to the end of this video because i'm going to give you a tip on how you can actually track if you're increasing your testosterone and if you've got high testosterone compared to low testosterone without having to go get like blood work done and stuff so the most important part about testosterone production is where it's actually made in the body and testosterone is made from the foods that you eat so the foods that you eat is like converted into hormones and testosterone and stuff and just a little note as well if you're it's super like dieting super hard right now like in a really low calorie that you're eating every day so you're in a super high calorie deficit you try to lose a bunch of body fat for summer that's going to have a huge impact on your testosterone production so you can watch my diet video um, in terms of like losing belly fat because i talk about in there how you can avoid dieting too hard so that you don't end up crashing your testosterone levels but yeah diet is what is going to create the actual testosterone and a lot of people think that low fat diets are going to be really good for getting into shape losing fat looking better building muscle right high protein high carbs low fat fat is the evil negative thing we can't have any fat in our diet but it's kind of the other way around fat is super super important in testosterone production and the one thing you need to realize about fat is there's two types of fat there's um, saturated fats and unsaturated fats saturated fats are bad these are negative like fats that your body can't really use um, and it's just going to go straight to your fat stores right but um, unsaturated fats which is mainly i think it's called mono unsaturated fats and poly unsaturated fats these are the healthy fatty acids that are actually going to be used to create hormones and all kinds of different functions in the cells and the brain and stuff and if you don't have these fats in your diet, if you're on a super low fat diet, like just like try to shred down for someone, you're just eating rice and chicken and broccoli and you've got like no fat in there, you're going to have a hard time producing testosterone. This is what I was doing when I tried to first shred down. I remember I was just cutting out all the fat. I was like, no, fat's bad. Fat's evil, right? I was not using any oil to cook with. I wasn't using butter or anything like that. I wasn't eating any nuts or anything. And I was just eating chicken and rice, chicken, broccoli and rice, like the typical bodybuilder diet, fish in a rice cake. <laughs> and I was, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was ne very negative on my testosterone production. So you need to eat mono unsaturated fats and poly unsaturated fats. Best place you can get these from is like nuts. Peanut butter has a lot of them. Avocados have a lot of them like salmon, things like that, like, you know, red kind of fish, um, fatty fishes and things like that. Just these are like healthy fats, nuts and all kinds of different things like seeds and things like that. They all have mono um, unsaturated fats in them, polyunsaturated fats, and that is what is needed to um, produce testosterone. So include them in your diet. If you're cutting them out of your diet, just include them in. I'm on keto, so I eat a lot of like fatty meats. I eat salmon, I eat um, like beef and stuff like that, eggs. And I also eat a lot of walnuts as well, actually. I do like walnuts. So sometimes I'll have a meal, it'll be like whatever, like beef and eggs and stuff. And then I'll just have like a handful of walnuts, like 30 grams, that's like 200 calories. So it's not too, it is calorific, but it's not too bad. And that's just a good place to get those fats from. Okay, the next thing you need to look at is your training. Now, something that I used to do was train super hard. I just thought like, okay, the longer I'm at the gym, the more that I train, the more I'll build muscle. And that is true to like an extent. But once you start to get into the territory of 
overtraining your muscles, like you're at the gym for like an hour or two hours, that is going to have a negative impact on your testosterone levels. There was a study that I was like just reading whilst I was researching this video where there was some people, like I think it was cyclists, um, like you know the Tour de France and this cycle for like hours and hours. They basically overtrain at that point, right? They're in a cycling tournament, so they have to do it. Or like marathon runners, right? They're just constantly, constantly running. It's seen that afterwards, after they like stop the marathon and stop the competition, that their testosterone levels have actually dropped. Like the background testosterone levels that they produce drops because they're in a state of like recovery. They're in a state of repairing like all the damaged muscle and things and recovering the overall like central nervous system of the body. When your body's in that like recovery state, your testosterone is going to drop. So when you go to the gym, what I'd recommend is keep your sessions like short, sweet, right? I go for 45 minutes to an hour. And I'll tell you a quick little story. I went to the gym um, last week with a guy who I met at the pub. He's like this like Greek dude. He's like super jacked, right? He's like got really good physique. And I got mates with him, got chatting to him and he goes to my gym. So me and one of my friends were like, oh, let's go to the gym with him. So there was three of us together and we're gonna go train back and biceps. So we got to the gym uh, and we're training, we're doing all the different exercises and me and my mate are sort of thinking we're going to be there for like 40 minutes, you know, to an hour or something like that, get a good workout in, get a good pump, back, you know, working on the back and biceps. And then this guy, he's, he's in the gym and he's like, oh yeah, so we'll do back and we'll train that for like an hour and then we'll do biceps for about 45 minutes. And I was just like... What? <laughs> and we went through with the workout i'll try and get a screenshot up of the actual workout that we did but it went on for one hour 45 minutes and it was the longest workout i've ever done and for like three days afterwards i couldn't train i didn't go to the gym because my back was so sore but even when my back wasn't sore like my back's not sore now my biceps aren't sore now but even though i wasn't sore i was very very like drained and I was just like unable to go to the gym. And I think that probably had a knock on effect on like my testosterone production for that week, even if it was only a little bit to the point where I wasn't like mentally driven enough to want to go and train again. So don't overtrain at the gym. Keep your sessions down to like to the point, right? Maybe just go for like, I go for what, like maybe six, seven sets per muscle. So like with the chest, for example, I'll, I'll do like four or five sets of dumbbell bench press. And then like maybe three sets or four sets of the pec deck. And that's like all I do for chest. And, but this guy we went to the gym with, he'd probably do like 20 sets for the chest, right? Something crazy like that with all like different exercises. And I think that's just overtraining. And that had a knock on impact on um, like the way I felt for the rest of the week. <clears throat> so yeah, keep your sessions short and sweet. Don't overtrain. Another tip I'll give you, and this is something that barely any people do, is they don't spend any time outside in the sun. So I live in the UK, today it's been super sunny. By the way, I'm filming this video kind of late at night because I'm not gonna lie to you, either today I've just not been productive. <laughs> I literally woke up today and it was super sunny outside and I've just been sunbathing, eating food, I've been cheating on my diet, I've just been having like a very relaxed, chilled out day. And it's been a nice day, I've had a good day, but I've not recorded any videos. And I was like sat in my room and I was like, fuck, I need to do something. Like, let's record one video at least. Um, and I'm feeling a bit tired, so if I sound a bit like I'm dead, it's because I've just been sunbathing all day. And you know when you're in the sun for a long time, it can make you feel a bit tired. But anyway, you need to get some sunlight because the UV that you get is gonna provide vitamin D. Like when, when UV hits your skin, your body produces something called vitamin D and vitamin D is needed to produce testosterone. I imagine it's like vitamin D combined with the um, unsaturated fats and other stuff is gonna help to like build testosterone. So you can think of your body like a little testosterone making factory, right? And the ingredients for the factory is like unsaturated fatty acids and like vitamin D. So if you can get outside in the sun and have those in your diet, then you can create um, more testosterone and the longer you're at the gym for training you can think that's like the factory has to go and pause if you train for longer at the gym or something right you could like make this into an analogy i'm just trying to make it into an anal analogy for you so you can more easily remember what you need to do to help increase your testosterone naturally so yeah get out into the sun sunbathe a bit right get a bit of uv nothing wrong with that just don't burn yourself obviously right i think i've burnt myself today i'm not gonna lie can it does it showing up Nah, i look out oh hang on yeah yeah i've definitely burnt it's a little bit red, isn't it? Yeah, I've been sat outside for maybe a little bit too long today. And the last tip I'll give you is no fab, right? Not wanking, not busting, you know, everywhere. I think one of the biggest reasons that I had low test was because I was a little spunk monkey, right? When I was a, like um, a teenager and like early 20s, I was just wanking all the time, like multiple times a day. And I just don't do it anymore because yeah, I genuinely think it is a 
huge impact on testosterone. There's like no studies really showing this, but you can look up like articles and watch podcasts of people. And from my own experience, when you like can do semen retention for a while, like a month or something, you'll start to notice that, or even like a week into just like not like, like busting your nut, you'll notice that you just wake up with like a hard dick, right? And I think this is a sign, like a good kind of measure that not many people talk about. But if you wake up with just like kind of a floppy dick every morning, it's probably a sign of low test. But since I've stopped like watching porn, like stopped masturbating and started implementing like my diet to be including more fats and like not being like a ton of carbs and protein, it's just like more fat and protein. I've noticed that every morning I wake up with like morning wood, which is a good sign because that's like, that's a sign that you've got high tests essentially. Um, so that's like a good measure you can use if you're waking up with morning wood after like trying to change your diet and change your lifestyle around. If you're waking up with morning wood, then that's a good sign that you're um, leading to increase your testosterone and you don't need to take any kind of like blood test or anything to confirm it. You can do if you want. I've never done a blood test, but you can do that if you want to. But yeah, if you're waking up with that, it's a good sign. You're on the right track. That's the good, it's a good place to be. So yeah, that's all my tips on how you can increase your testosterone completely naturally. Hope you got some value out of that video, mate. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Just keep improving yourself every day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.